Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another board game review. This is another retro review. I apologise for all the retro, but I have some retro, so shut up and let me retro. Today, Space Crusade! You get four boards of square variety with different corridors and rooms and... They're, they're boards, what, what more do you want from me? You get, you get some wall sections and... A monster crib sheet and you get rule books and campaigns and like honestly have you ever seen anything so beautiful as 90s adverts honestly oh I just I want to chew on it and maybe ingest it in my tummy tum you get all bits and bobs and you get figures so question the first what do I do and how do I win well you will either be a space marine player and there can be up to three of you. Look at you, sexy space marines. Or you'll be the chaos player, and there's just just one of you. But you get you get lots of cool cool stuff. You get you get all the all the stuff. You get you get it all. You get all the stuff. Space marine player. How do you win? Well, you'll come in with your lovely little squad of men, sexy squad, and what you'll do is you'll do a mission. And if you succeed the mission, you'll get bonus points. You'll get like thirty points. Or the secondary mission, you'll get like 15 points. So then you're sitting on a big old fat stack of points, which is amazing. Equally, if you get any murders and you do some, some killing in the background later on, like if you destroy stuff, you get points for destroying them. And at the end of the mission, you add up your points. Have you got like 60 points? Or has the yellow guy got like 70 points? Or has the blue guy got like 80 points? Well, whichever one of you has the most points gets a promotion you lucky bugger and if it turns out to be the chaos player well he gets a promotion and that guy's the winner so you win by getting points without doubt the coolest part of the game is actually just the setup at the beginning so you're player one and you've picked the imperial fists with their yellow armor and don't they look sexy well this little fella with a face is your captain and you can choose for your captain a bolt gun, a sword and axe, or a pistol and axe, or a sword and power fist. So, and in that, in that you get to customise your figure. Equally your little four man squad, you have to have one guy with a bolt gun, but then you can give one an assault rifle, or a rocket launcher, or a plasma gun. This is supremely customizable and supremely cool equally each player gets to choose one of four orders and four out of eight equipment cards which customize your squad even more the imperial fists are good at shooting so they've got stuff that makes them better at shooting the blood angels they like blood so they're good at stabbing things I guess and the ultramarines which are blue are kind of a bit more tactical and they've got a few more tricks up their sleeves they have like a health pack and stuff like that so each of the three is a bit different if you're the fourth player though if you're chaos you can you can give your mech some guns and bugger off because that's it so you get to do another point that weighs quite heavy in the game's favor is everything's on these handy little reference sheets and it's all pretty bloody clear. You've the other big thing to note is you've got these gigantic player boards. What the hell are they for? What, look at this, it looks so sexy doesn't it? Well you've got this slider which is your sh sergeant's health, that's right it goes from six down to one and then zero and then your sergeant's dead and considering the game is based entirely around promoting sergeants fair enough and you've also got your points and again considering the game's about getting points fair enough you've also got a few places where you can put some little dots in for if you've got trackers which let you re-roll and you've got spaces for where your promotions go and so but it's it's pointless it's it's pretty but it's it's pretty pretty pointless really i think that's i think it's stupid so once all the players have been picked and the board's been set up and this takes bloody forever by the way this is the most stupid design in the world once it's been set up it's the Space Marine's turn. So the first thing the Space Marine does is he opens his airlock. You can have fun with this. And his first Marine 
takes his step out. Now the Chaos player at this point gets his little blip tokens, he's got his little blip tokens, and he has to put down as many as he wants all around the board. Now part of me loves this, and part of me hates this, because the Chaos player has only got so many of these, and he's had to make tactical decisions on a quarter of the board without having any idea about what state to do it in. More Space Marines move out, each one of them has a set amount of moves, uh, they can shoot, a set amount of actions, it's all fine. And then it's the next Space Marines turn. Another door opens, another load of blips go on the board. And then the next door opens, and then another load of blips go on the board. And at this stage you've got one quarter of the board unexplored, and the Chaos player's just stuck fiddling his thumbs. Each of them go round, everyone moves. When you encounter a blip, it's exciting because you reveal what's there and you're like, oh no, these these things are in the room. Oh God, how am I going to deal with that? He put, he put the Dreadnought there. But he put the Dreadnought there. That's his toughest piece. You kill that, he's, he's scuppered. Does he save it? Does he throw it in early? Equally, where's the control? Where's the choice? And it is the fact that you get points that kind of makes the game entirely redundant because even though you're all space marines and you work together and you're meant to be good guys and you're only fighting one enemy you're actually not on the same side you don't actually support each other or look after each other I want to get the kill for the big guy no I want to get the kill I'll do the mission ha ah, ha you've lost all your men ah, how dare you you're not actually working together you're working against each other and it's it kind of cheapens the experience a bit and rather than tactically go through rooms and not lose any of your precious support soldiers what you're kind of doing actually is fighting each other as much as the game as much as the chaos leader something else to say about the way this game is so broken and doesn't feel like it's play tested because combat is deadly for both sides shooting only hurts the person you shoot so, in combat, you ignore armor. Space Marine attacks Goblin. Space Marine rolls two white dice for combat. Goblin rolls one white, white dice for combat. Now, if the Goblin is lucky enough to roll a six, which isn't great luck, but possible, and the Space Marine rolls two twos or a one, or, you know, if he gets all zeros, which is very likely, Space Marine's dead. But Goblin shooting has to roll a five and a six on two dice, to kill him. It's just easier to stab. And you kind of realise when you're the monster guy, just gank a load of goblins or whatever over a space marine and just stab him and he'll fall over. And they don't come back after you stab him once, unless it's the bloody sergeant. The game is basically a game of heroes. The sergeant's a stupid buff. They Another example of how the game just feels so broken and completely unplay tested is the fact that in a two player game, it's you versus chaos, okay? That's it. And it's a bit unbalanced because the Chaos guy has everything extra with it. He has all these extra parts and soldiers and there's just not enough of you. In a three player game however, there's two teams of Space Marines to tackle this horde of nonsense. And it kind of feels a bit more even. It feels like there's maybe not enough of the low-level scrubs. There's not enough, and they're gonna they're gonna struggle, and you're gonna have a bit of a bad time if you're not trying really hard. But then, in a four-player game, well, obviously they bring another Space Marine in. At which point, there's like 15 Space Marines, and they're all pretty damn good. And at this stage of the game, the Chaos player just gets wiped out. They can't. They can't hope to succeed, they can't hope to survive. The rule book and the missions you get in the game, they're kind of filled with exactly the same. There's no real variation or intelligence to them. And even though all of them are four square, like you've got four square blocks, there's like one mission where they change it up and give it a bit of a different space. Everything else is just squares. It just doesn't feel very thought out. It feels like we've got these cool toys and they're so cool, let's just, make people roll dice and play a game that's a bit dull and no one's having any fun. But by far and away the absolute best part about the game is the sexy sexy figures. Look how 
sexy they are. Look how pretty they look. Look at look how many different types you've got. You've got Chaos Marines and all oh, they're so sexy and and you got you got Necron Cyborg Terminator type robots and they're all so sexy. And you've got Gene Stealers which are like vicious alien things and they really make your Marines have a bad day. They really upset them and you got you got orcs and uh, orkies and you got goblins as well and they're just rubbish really rubbish orcs I guess. But if you don't like beautiful figures and also you gotta paint them up yourself and build them yourself. Like, what's the point of this game? It's a bit old, a bit retro and it kind of reminds me of a throwback time when games didn't really have to make sense because only children played them and this feels like a game that doesn't really make sense because they only expected children to play them and a child will look at it and go I love it and then just eventually get lost in just imagining being space marines in a corridor full of monsters because can't really play the game. It is an interesting curio and it can be bought online in Ebays for a good hundred pounds. It's not worth your time. If you want a good Warhammer game look at Space Hulk. Space Hulk is amazing. But if you want to just remember how beautiful it was to be born in the 90s and how stupid the world was but also it felt fun and safe, pick it up have a look at it, customise the hell out of it and just change everything and make it your game. For example, I give sergeants three lives, but to make up for it, I give basic soldiers two. And I take a pack off when they lose their first life because I can do that. I dropped him. I'm an adult. I can do my own thing. I also super buff the chaos player and kind of make them more as a dungeon master than an actual player. It can be fun. But you've got to put some real work into making it so. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.